is the distance formula. Now, I told you guys that I was born in Belgium, and the closest city on the map is this Leuven, uh, where I lived. I lived in a, a small town called Wechmal, just outside of it. Um, and now my brother actually lives in Ghent. And so, or Ghent, if you prefer to pronounce it in Flemish. So, if we put on a coordinate grid, and imagine we're putting an x, y through here. And so that's our zero, zero point. And maybe Ghent is going to be to the left, so that's a negative, and we're going to make that negative 5, 4. And that's going to be point G. And then Leuven is to the right and up, but not quite as much. So it's going to be at 3, 1. And so that's going to be right here. I wanted to know how far is it. Now, I want to relate the distance formula because so many people don't understand where it's coming from. The distance from here to here, if you want to think of, okay, how far north to south did we change and how far east to west did we change? And treat it because north to south and east to west make a right angle. So from negative 5 to 3, that total distance is 8. 3 minus a negative 5, right? In a sense, it's the absolute value of it. And you can do it either way. Um, and then 4 minus 1, this total change, is 3. And so this side of the triangle is 3, this side of the triangle is 8. And if we want to find this side of the triangle, we have to use something called Pythagorean Theorem. The Pythagorean Theorem says if you have some side A and some side B and the hypotenuse is C, call this the hypotenuse, fancy, fancy word, <coughs> excuse me, that's called the hypotenuse and these are the legs because they're next to the right triangle. Now, very important, this only works because it's a right triangle. I promise you I am getting back to the Belgian problem. Um, but the Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And so the hypotenuse has to be that c squared because it's the longest side. Sort of makes sense like that. And so what we're going to do up here is the Pythagorean theorem is going to be 3 squared or this is going to be the distance in here so that's going to be 3 squared plus 8 squared and notice that that doesn't matter which one it goes where, it doesn't matter that this triangle looks exactly the same as that one I could have done 8 squared plus 3 squared because 9 plus 81 is the same thing as 81 plus 9. And by 81, wow, wow, and you guys are all shouting at your computers right now, um, 8 squared is 64. And so we have 9 plus 64, what is that, 73 is C squared. And so that C, um, I'm going to take the square root of both sides now, square root of 73, Square root of c squared, it's going to cancel out that squared. Square root of 73. Well, um, we know 81 is 9, and we know 64 is 8, so we know it's a, in between those two, and you guys can approximate that. I actually don't have my calculator on me right now, otherwise I'd approximate that a little bit better. And so that is the distance. And so then, now... That's the units, and and so what we would need to do is that each one of those units is 10 kilometers, and so we'd have to multiply by 10 kilometers to actually find the distance. So you guys can do that. That would be the actual distance from Ghent to Leuven. So...
the distance formula, what they do is they change this a squared plus b squared equals c squared slightly. And by that I mean all they do is they take the square root of it. They say a squared plus b squared equals c squared. They take the square root of it, so you get c. And instead of c, it's really d, as in distance. And then the square root of a squared plus b squared, they change into, because to find a and to find b, to find a and to find b, what they do is they say this a right here is going to be the result of, remember how we found the 8? We subtracted the 3 and the negative 5. We did 3 minus the negative 5 gave us the 8. And so you do x2 minus x1. And again, the order doesn't matter because what's going to happen is x2 minus x1 is going to be squared. And then you're going to do the same thing with the y's. y2 minus y1. And again, it doesn't matter because it's going to be squared. It doesn't matter what order you do it in. Because when you square something, it makes it positive. So you are welcome to use this distance formula. But I will think of it as the Pythagorean theorem every single time because this confuses uh, me like crazy. Because there's this huge, massive square root over everything. And sometimes I forget to do it. Um, and then you've got a bunch of subscripts, x sub 2, Right? We're talking about the second x minus the first x, things like that, and it just confuses my brain. So I think of the more simpler method, think of distance formula, just like Pythagorean theorem. <coughs> so, given that you have two points, you guys try this one. Find the length of the segment. Find the distance. So you've got negative 2, 7, 3, negative 2. Seriously, folks. Pause the video and try it yourself. And so from 3 to negative 2, 3 to get to 0, and then another 2, so that's 5, that side length, 3 minus a negative 2. And then 7 minus a negative 2. Sorry. 7 minus a negative 2 is 9. Now, realize with me is that the first time I did this x minus this x, and the next time I did this one minus this one, and the only reason being is that I wanted a positive answer, and I knew which way would give me a positive answer. So realize that these lengths are going to be positive because they're lengths of this little triangle that we've made. And then a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So 9 squared plus 5 squared, 81 plus 25 equals c squared. So 81 plus 25 is 106, and then I can take the square root of 106, and that is equal to c. And you can also approximate that if you wanted to on your calculator. So line M bisects AL at T. So we've got this line segment AL, and it bisects line M. So this is line M, and it's going to bisect it at T. If AL is 7, the whole thing is 7. AT, because it's bisecting it, it's cutting it in half. Half of it is going to be 7 divided by 2, 3.5 centimeters. And so that's just a... Understanding what bisects mean. Bisects means cuts in half. Now, S is the midpoint of OU. S O U. Oh, look, O S U. Go Bucks. O S is 4x minus 5. O U is 10. Solve for x, find O U. And so, because it's the midpoint, you know that this side has to be the same as this side. So you could say 4x minus 5. 
And so 4x minus 5, two of those, because if I double half of it, I have to get the 10. If I double that, or do 4x minus 5 plus 4x minus 5, however you want to think about it, I will get 8x minus 10 equals 10. And I can start solving this. And so add the 10 over, I get 8x equals 20. Divide by 8, I get 20 over 8, which you can reduce, take out the 4, right? Because they both have a 4, so 20 divided by 4 is 5, and 8 divided by 4 is 2. So 5, five halves. Um, and so that is what x is. And then find OU. OU is the whole thing. And I guess that was a silly question. I, I should have asked what maybe 4x minus 5 was because I gave you OU. It was 10. So x is 5 halves. Congratulations. That is the distance formula.